Hi uh, everyone. Uh, so now we're going to look at these counting things and counting um, objects that we've been working with and actually create some objects. So here the idea is that remember how when we were looking at the flipping of three coins and I said we can look at this either as an ordered list or as an unordered list. And so we're really going to break that down into um, how many different options we have for ordered and unordered lists. So the first thing we're going to talk about um, is what's called a sequence. So what is a sequence? A sequence of length k of elements of s is going to be an ordered list. So we have an ordered list here. There's an ordered list which has k elements. So I need k elements. Each one of these elements coming from s. Um, so we'll do this example and then we'll figure out how many of um, each thing we have. So let's start off with this example 3.1. Um, and so in this case, what we have is I have a set ABC and we're going to let K equal to four. Um, so basically what I want is some ordered list with four elements, each element coming from K. So here's one example. I can have A, B, B, A, right? So each element is in S and there's four objects here. So that's basically what I'm thinking of. So another example, I can do four A's. I can do a, a long version of cab. Uh, and then I can do like a, a cac, I don't know, just random, right? Um, and so if you think about this, each term, I have n options to put in, right? So I can do n things here. Uh, I guess, yeah, I'm setting the size of s to be n. So I have n options here, I have n options there, I have n options here, and n options here. So remember when we have n options by the multiplication rule, when we have n options at each choice, we just multiply them together. So n times n times n times n. We have k of these, so this is just going to be n to the k, n to the 4 in this case. So in essence, most of the time, we just have n to the k number of elements when we're talking about sequences. So for us, that means we have 3 to the 4, which is equal to 81 different sequences. And here, I've just given four of them. Uh, cool. So next up, what we have are orderings. So an ordering, what's an ordering? So an ordering of k elements, k out of n elements. So think of this as we were looking at a particular sequence. So we're looking at a sequence of K elements where every entry is different. So that's the key point where every entry is different. So none of the examples in our previous sequence, so none of these from above, none of these work because they all have repeated entries. And you can kind of see when K is bigger than N, we're always going to get repeated entries. So this only makes sense. Um, when k is less than n. So k is less than or equal to n most of the time. Um, and so what does this look like? So maybe, um, do I want to do, yeah. So what does this look like? So remember in this case we have some sequence, right? So we have some element here, some element here, dot, 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 some element here. And this first one we said can have n elements, right? Um, so we're trying to figure out how many elements we have in how many options. So we have n options for the first entry. Now the second entry, again, we have n options, but we can't be the same as the first. That means in this case, we're going to have n minus one options, right? Because it can't be that first option. Uh, the second entry, well, it's going to be n minus two, right? Because it can be any of the n except for the first two. Um, so we can keep doing this. And we're going to do this k times, which means finally we get n minus k plus 1. Um, so really, when we're talking about how many options we'll have, we'll have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, all the way up to n minus k plus 1. Um, and we're going to denote this as nk. Uh, 
And another way to look at this actually is through shorter notation, right? This is kind of long and it gets a little irritating to write all this down. So we're gonna rec we're gonna use factorial. So if you recall a factorial, it's just taking the numbers and you multiply them all after another. So we have n times n minus one, n times minus two, etc. But we don't stop at k, we go all the way down to one. So if we're going all the way down to one, that gives me n factorial. And this part we can represent as, so if I think about it, I'm taking my n terms. So here I can pretend I have other things. Uh, n minus k, n minus k minus one, right? All the way up to one. I guess I should do this in red. Let's do this in red. Because we're deleting them. n minus k, n minus k minus one, all the way down to one. And then we need to remove this part so that it doesn't appear. So I can think of this as, I can think of nk as n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. And that makes life a lot easier to write. Uh, here, you're gonna wanna recall that zero factorial is equal to one. Uh, and we'll see this in much, like why we need this um, later on. So let's look at an example. I guess we'll do it here. Uh, let's look at an example, um, example 3.2. Uh, so here we're taking our set to be um, a, b, x, y. So n is equal to, so we have n equal to four. Uh, and we're gonna look at k equal to two. Uh, And we're going to look at all the different possible options. Um, so in this case, what we have is we're going to look at sequences of two elements where no two are the same. So if I put A here, um, I can either put a B, I can put an X, or I can put a Y, right? Uh, if I start off with B, I can either have A, I can have X, or I can have Y, right? I can't repeat the entries. If I start off with X, I can have X A, X B, or X Y. And if I start off with Y, I can have Y A, um, Y B, or Y X. And so notice how the order matters, right? A, B, and B, A are not the same thing. Um, and let's double check we have the, all the elements that we're not missing one. Uh, so here, um, I kind of already wrote it down but we want four factorial divided by two factorial, right? So we have four times three times two times one divided by two times one. So these cancel and we have four times three, which is 12. And here we have 12. Um, so this is where the order matters and why these are called orderings because we care about the order. This is an ordered list. Um, now, if we make um, K equal to N, this is basically a permutation. Uh, so another way to think of a permutation um, uh, so actually I'm going to rewrite this so a permutation permutation there's two definitions permutation is an ordering of k out of k elements um, and so another way to look at this is I look at one ordering. So I have some ordering and I look at a reshuffling of the thing. So I can look at how things shuffle around to give me different options. Um, and so in our case, what we have is, so, uh, let's first figure out how many, per, or no, I guess we'll look at this reshuffling. Uh, so here, I'm going to look at this ordering here, A, B, C. We'll look at this reshuffling definition of things. Um, and so how, what's the different ways I can reshuffle it? Well, the first thing I can do is I could just leave it alone. I don't have to shuffle anything. I could just be like, we're done. No more. We're not changing shit. Uh, and so I can also take the last two, the B and the C, and I can flop them around, right? So I can take uh, A, C, B. Uh, I can put the B in the front. I can now flop the swip, swip, bleh, bleh, words. I can swap the C and the A. 
Uh, I can put the C in front, and I can swap the A, the B, and the A. And so here I end up having six options. Uh, so let's see if this is actually all the options we can get. So if you think about it, I said it's an ordering of K out of K elements. So we should have something like this. So this is K factorial over K minus K factorial. So K minus K factorial, remember, is just zero factorial, which is one. So we should get K factorial. Um, and this makes sense, right? Like I have K options for the first one, K minus one for the second, all the way down to one at the end, because I've gone through all my different K options. Um, and so we end up with K factorial permutations. And so in our example, we had three times two times one total options, which is equal to six. So we end up getting all the different options. That's it. We have six different options.